Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Izuku had the destructive quirk, Deku X Harem, movie, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, God of Hope, link is in the description, and also subscribe to our channel, and like this video, so let's begin the story. They are already in their third year, and now they are going to have to think about what they want to be for the future, although I think I have an idea of what they want. That's what a teacher said after seeing how his students manifest their squirts in class. There were some who boasted of being heroes. Among them there was one who boasted of his explosive powers. Professor Midoriya Khan wants to be a hero. The class remained silent and looked at a boy, that boy had green hair and was looking only at his book without caring about the looks of others. That boy's name was. Midoriya Izuku. You? A hero? Don't make me laugh, the only thing I know how to do is destroy Deku. He did not respond as he continued in his book. I am talking to you. Boom. With an explosion he hit him hard and hit a wall. Everyone was afraid. It wasn't fear of the explosive boy. When the green-haired man stood up, he simply wiped the dust off his clothes and looked seriously at his attacker. What I do doesn't matter to you, we all have the right to decide what we want, I'm not telling you that you wouldn't be a hero, since you are like a bomb with legs that would hurt someone with a tantrum. What did you tell me, you damned loser? What you heard? He unconsciously clenched his fist. When they saw that fist, everyone was terrified and took cover in their seats, including the teacher. He stopped when he saw that everyone was afraid of him. His life had always been like this. Be someone everyone looks at with fear. Ever since his quirk appeared he was happy because he could be a hero, like his favorite hero. But the happiness was gone when he knew what his power was. It was one so devastating that even he was terrified if he lost control. His power was. Create earthquakes. Natural phenomena that claim many lives every time tectonic plates collide. Midoriya Kun, lower that fist please said the teacher, being somewhat scared of what could happen. He obeyed. I look at his hands with a lost look full of sadness. I'm not a villain were his thoughts. When it was time to leave, he put his things away even though he had those thoughts. Since his quirk had come to light, all the adults looked at him with fear and hatred. Many blamed him for the earthquakes that have occurred in the country. But he had never been the culprit. Everyone believed that he would become a villain and cause an earthquake that would destroy the country. They never saw that he has never wanted to hurt anyone. They never saw that he just wants to be a hero. They only saw him as a threat. I'm not a villain were his thoughts to endure those looks. It was his mantra and the only thing that kept him on the right path. You're still here Deku. He didn't even pay attention to his ex-friend who was talking to him. I'm not in the mood for you Katsuki. I don't give a damn what your mood is, I'm just going to warn you not to even think about wanting to enter Yue, my path to being the most powerful hero, will not be interrupted by a wimp like you. He couldn't continue when the same boy grabbed him by the face, looking at him with great fury. Do you remember the last time I had a hand on you? You were lucky you didn't have a stroke because of my power, don't make me want to do it again. He let go and went back to collect his things and then leave, but not before. You may have a very powerful quirk, but you are just the same idiot I knew, you will never be a hero, you are only good for destruction. Without further ado. He went away. Having that boy's words in my head. Izuku was walking entering a tunnel. Distracted. Thinking. Still looking at his hands. I'm not a villain his thoughts were his comfort. He was so distracted that he didn't notice that something green and liquid was coming out of the sewer. What do we have here? This guy is helpful. Before he could do anything, that thing had caught him. Shit, this is what happens to me because I'm distracted. What should I do? I tried by many means to escape. But I can't. It was like fighting against the tide. You wouldn't win. So he only had one option left. I do not have any other alternative. He clenched his fist and a white aura surrounded it until a sphere formed around the fist. Just when I was going to use it. Texas mash. Someone came to his aid. One blow was what it took to. Beat it. I use air pressure with a single fist. After that, the green slime was enclosed in a plastic bottle. Izuku was in front of his hero. All Might. I'm glad I was able to arrive on time, boy you can rest assured. He was a tall, muscular man with blonde hair. The most characteristic thing about him was. That his smile gave security. He was getting ready to leave. Wait, I have to talk to you. I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. A very high jump away. What he didn't notice was that the same boy who saved him was holding his legs. Now we see the same boy who was walking with a look empty of feelings. His own hero, his idol. I had told him that being a hero is saving lives, not taking them. It was more than obvious that Izuku did not fit into that category. Things couldn't be worse in his life. 
even the hero that I admire told me that I couldn't be one, that my power cannot save someone, that I should be a police officer. Are they alright? Am I a villain? He could not continue, as he saw how people gathered. The heroes are facing a villain that shouldn't matter to me anymore. He intended to leave and pretend he didn't see anything. But he saw something that made him stay. It was the same liquid type that tried to possess him. It's not that one All Might was supposed to have captured him he must have gotten loose when I. Izuku knew that maybe he was to blame for what is happening now. Heroes can't get close. And it was true none of them could not do something since their powers would not be used. And the worst. Something Izuku could notice. That liquid guy had taken someone he knew. Tetsuki. It was the same explosive blonde. For a moment he was tempted to leave. Why should I help him he stopped being my friend for years I shouldn't care what happens to him. Just as he was going to leave he took one last look at her and he could see something in her eyes. That something was enough. Hey boy, wait. The jump into danger. Me and my good heart, why do I have to go where they don't call me? Were his thoughts as he ran straight to the slimy villain who had his ex-friend. Am I trying to save the one who has been my worst nightmare all because you ask for help? He threw his things in the muddy face and put his hand in to pull it out with his strength and throw it away. Deku. Damned. You took away my prey. The mud guy was about to launch himself at the green-haired boy, but. His right hand was surrounded by wide aura, the winds blowing gathering at the fist. Tremor. The same all night who was among everyone was surprised by what his eyes saw. Just when the slime monster was on the. Izuku. He released his fist. Power. Hum. An unreal sound was heard, and the air in front of the boy began to do something that even the heroes themselves thought was impossible. It started to break. The same force of the fist plus the power of a tremendous earthquake was what made the muddy monster dissolve into nothing. Managing to eliminate it. But also causing many buildings and part of the street to end up in ruins and rubble. The force was so much that some debris flew towards the crowd that was protected by the mountain woman, Kamui. After the dust cleared the heroes were shocked to see so much destruction. Itsuki looked in shock, as he had never seen his friend fully display his quirk. I barely speak. Why why did you save me? I don't even know I just did it to myself was what the boy said without looking at him, seeing all the damage he has caused with empty eyes. The blonde was about to speak again when the green-haired boy interrupted him. And you were right I only served to destroy. And without looking at him he walked away. The heroes tried to congratulate him for such a demonstration of power, but he ignored them. I only walked towards the police officers who were still in shock. When he was in front of them he offered his dolls. Damage to other people's and public property I am surrendering. It took the police a few seconds to understand what the boy was saying. Until one of them put handcuffs on him. It was official he was arrested. You have the right to remain silent, everything you say will be used against you in court, you have the right to a lawyer, if you cannot afford one the court will assign you one did you understand your rights correctly. He didn't say anything, he just looked at the ground. Walk. They took him away. The heroes replied to the police that they should not do it, they asked them to release him. But there was nothing that could be done. Itsuki looked at this without knowing why, he felt helpless, as he saw how they took the one who saved him away, as if he were the culprit. Did you see what that boy did? That was my business that I destroyed. Our home became rubble. I hope he never gets out of jail. Those were the words of the people who looked at him those looks of hate and fear. The ones he was used to seeing. Well nothing else matters, I hope my cell doesn't have rats he thought resignedly, accepting his fate. Enters. And like a criminal he was put into the patrol car to be taken to trial. Three days passed. His trial did not yet have a date. And he was in his cell. I ate little. I barely slept. He just watched the sunlight filtering through his barred window. He was glad he was in solitary confinement, he didn't want to have to deal with other inmates. Although some weren't so bad. Hey boy sing us something. Said one of them, using a piece of mirror to look at his next door neighbor. Yes boy, your voice makes us forget that this is a prison. Some were kind. Others were serious. And others I better not say anything. Okay guys I hope you like it. He said without any problem. The good thing was that the same guard was also kind to the boy, he knows that he is not to blame for what happened in that place. So she played a song since she also liked to hear him sing. He became popular for his good voice. The song he heard was one that he knew well, one that helped him in his nights when he had nightmares with those looks of hate that people gave him for having such destructive power. The power that was his curse. The power I wish I didn't have. So close no matter how far. Couldn't be much more from the heart. Forever trusting who we are. And nothing else matters. Never opened myself this way. Life is ours, we live it our way. All these words I don't just say. And nothing else matters. 
Trust I seek, and I find in you. Every day for us something new. Open mind for a different view. And nothing else matters. Never cared for what they do. Never cared for what they know. But I know. So close no matter how far. Couldn't be much more from the heart. Forever trusting who we are. And nothing else matters. Never cared for what they do. Never cared for what they know. But I know. The harmonica and his voice made those who were locked up forget for a few moments that they were in a hole with no way out. Others remembered someone to whom they loved and gave everything. But only Izuku wanted that song to be his expression or at least dedicate it to some girl. Something he won't have knowing that he could be locked up for life for being considered a danger to the city. He knows that they will not hesitate to put him in a maximum security prison so as not to see the light of the sun. But. Nothing matters anymore. Never opened myself this way. Life is ours, we live it our way. All these words I don't just say. Trust I seek and I find in you. Every day for us something new. Open mind for a different view. And nothing else matters. Never cared for what they say. Never cared for games they play. Never cared for what they do. Never cared for what they know. And I know. The guitar solo reminded listeners that the song was rock metal. That was what Izuku was destined for. Couldn't complain after all. Society already sees it. Like a villain. But. Nothing else matters. He said it in a whisper. Having some treacherous tears coming out of his eyes. Accepting your destiny. Without knowing that this is different from what you think. The week passes. And the day came that I desired and at the same time feared. The day of his judgment. When he arrived he could see only the judge in court who had his gavel while looking at some papers. Midori Azuku, because you saved many people in that area we would have to let you go, but, because you caused millions in material damage and damage to public areas and because you have a very destructive quirk, I have no choice but to do what I have to do. He glances at the boy who simply kept his eyes on the ground, waiting for the inevitable condemnation while the witnesses watched everything. Understand that we do not do this for harm, we do it for the good of others, since you should know that your powers are not something that can be controlled, an example would be the accident that caused the death of your parents. Just when he was going to complain to the judge he spoke. Also understand that no one accuses you of being responsible or complains about it, it was a natural event, and these things happen. He remained silent, still wishing that they had not said or mentioned that part of his life that he wanted to forget. His sentence will be life imprisonment in the maximum security prison specialized for people with peculiarities without the possibility of parole. Things were bleak for the green-haired man. Believe me, in his eyes I can see that he is a good boy and that he does not wish harm to anyone, but the safety of others is the first priority and his powers are a risk for everyone the case is closed. Just when the judge was going to hit the gavel and end the sentence. Just when Izuku felt that his soul would fall into darkness and that he would lose faith. Stop your honor. The voice stopped the judge. The boy turned to see someone he didn't expect. It was All Might himself in a suit. Accompanied by someone of short stature who looked like some kind of rodent. And the heroes who witnessed Izuku's power that day. You are making a serious mistake, you are condemning a potential hero to lifelong confinement, that's what the rodent said. What Izuku didn't know was that these two people were the ones who opened the doors to the world. Two days passed, and Izuku left the place accompanied by All Might and the rodent guy called Nedzu. Well boy, welcome to freedom. Why? Why, what? Asked All Might. Why did they help me, it was more than obvious that they would have one less threat on the streets or in the country is what I asked not being sure and not believing that I was now free. They both looked at the boy without knowing why he was asking a question questioning his freedom. Until All Might spoke. Boy I have seen in your eyes that despite having a very shady past, you still strive to do the right thing, and that shows that you do not seek to be accepted by society or to be recognized for your actions in saving that boy. They have proven that you are worthy of being a hero. The words of the man who was once his idol entered the green-haired man's head having many things to think about. And well young man, as All Might told me, you have potential like a diamond in the rough, so I want to offer you the opportunity to enter the UA Academy so that you can become a hero. The rodent spoke when he saw how the boy remained thoughtful. On the other hand, the green-haired man did not know what decision to make, whether to accept being a hero, enter the most famous hero academy in Japan or simply give up and never use his quirk again. I didn't know what decision to make. You don't have to decide now boy take your time and look for us to let us know your decision once you make it, I'll give you my card. The rodent gave him a card with a telephone number. See you son, I hope to see you again. And so they both said goodbye to the young man who still had the card in his fingers looking at the number. Having a night without being able to sleep when he arrives at his empty apartment where no one welcomes him. It dawned, and he got up late. 
due to his current situation, his previous job, which was that of a food deliveryman, was fired for not showing up while he was in prison. He was lucky that he was not expelled from his school. He went to his kitchen to prepare some breakfast and then went for a walk for a while. When he passed by a certain place everyone looked at him with some contempt, it was the same place where he had to use his cork to stop the villain. Passing through that place that was undergoing reconstruction work, ignoring those looks that he was used to. When I stopped for a moment. The little boy stood in front of him smiling. Hello. Hello. He didn't know how to respond. Are you the one who defeated that green man by breaking the air with your fist? Me then. Give me your autograph sir. The boy extended a notebook and a pen towards the young man who did not know what to do, since that had never happened to him, since his quirk came to light. He just looked at the other adults who were watching him seriously, and he knew that this was not a good idea. Look I'm sorry, but I. He hesitated, as the boy looked eager to have his autograph. He didn't have the courage to say no to those tender eyes. So, letting out a sigh of defeat, I took the pen and notebook to give him his autograph. When he did he gave it to the boy who smiled with joy like any child happy to meet his idol. Thank you sir, you are my idol. Izuku was surprised by those words, he didn't expect to be someone's idol, much less a child. But feeling that feeling of being respected and idolized by a little one only did something that he rarely does. Smile. He got down on one knee and put his hand on the boy's head, ruffling his hair. I'm glad I am thank you for considering me your idol, and. Hey. What are you doing to my son? He was abruptly pushed by an adult who was looking at Izuku with hatred while a woman hugs the child. Honey, are you okay? Did that monster do something to you? Upon hearing those words he knew that what he had just done should not have been done. Stay away from my son, you already destroyed my business and my house, and now you want to hurt my son damn monster. That word was much more hurtful and perhaps not far from the reality he has heard since that earthquake. Only without looking he got up and dusted himself off. To then walk again and retire. But. Get out of here monster. But not before receiving the impact of a glass bottle on the left side of his forehead breaking it and leaving a bleeding wound that ran towards his eye and down to his cheek until it reached his chin and dripped. He had stopped for a moment when he felt that pain, although it was not noticeable, it was there and it made him wonder. Was it worth it? Was it worth it to have saved those people? Was it worth it to save your former friend? But the most important question asked was. Is it worth being the hero of a society that despises you? But those questions he left that place without caring if he continued bleeding. Not caring if he left a trail of blood on the road. He walked until he reached a park where he sat in the shade of a tree. Staring into nothingness, repeating in your mind that same word that still runs through your head. Monster. Their clothes already had blood stains, receiving the looks of many people such as couples or families who were enjoying the place. He looked down, looking at his hands that were stained with his blood. He thought that perhaps the best thing would be to forget everything and end his suffering. His parents died. His friends abandoned him. His best friend became his enemy. And to top it off. He is a threat that his own government would not hesitate to lock up for life as a criminal. Many of us ask ourselves is life fair? Do we come into the world only to suffer and suffer? Is there a purpose in which the good have to suffer while those who do not suffer do harm? Maybe God if there is one who likes to see how someone suffers while turning a blind eye when the one who should suffer continues to do harm. Maybe he finds it funny to see the suffering of the righteous. So, being tired of satisfying his entertainment, he took something that fell into his jacket pockets. A sharp piece of glass. And taking it he directed the blade at his wrist without any hesitation contemplating what he was going to do. If there is hell I hope the devil comes to take me in person at least he would have some interest in me. Tears began to come out of his eyes although he tried not to let them go. In vain. Goodbye world I hope the next idiot doesn't suffer so much. And with that he slowly. I cut his left wrist. And with some pain the right. Dropping the glass on the grass, he let the blood flow from his body, staining the earth and grass crimson. Slowly he felt that his strength was leaving and a very deadly cold was in his body. He was dying. He smiled knowing that his suffering will finally end. His vision was already blurry. Bye bye. And with that he closed his eyes saying one last farewell. Darkness. It was what I saw. Until I can make out a white light. Maybe it was heaven. Or a deception, deluding you since it is actually hell. He wanted to know. But at the same time I tried to know where I was. Until his eyes got used to the light. It wasn't heaven. It was that of a lamp on a white ceiling. He focused better until he could notice that he was in a bed with white sheets. He was in a hospital. He? Shouldn't he be dead? I look for more with my eyes until someone enters through a door. It was a girl, with black hair and eyes of the same color, who came in with some notebooks. 
When she saw him with her eyes open, she was happy. Thank heaven you woke up. He didn't understand what he was doing here. I brought you some manga to entertain you, the doctor will come in an hour to check on your condition. He didn't respond. You don't speak. Maybe you're mute or something, well how about I show you some that I brought, they aren't the most recent, but. Who are you? The green-haired man's voice was weak, but notable enough for the girl to hear him. She gave him her attention, and smiled knowing that the boy is not mute. My name is Yeoi Rozumomo, and I found you with wounds on your wrists, so I made some bandages and dressed your wounds and called an ambulance that brought you to this hospital. You were unconscious for 12 hours, in which they had to give you a transfusion of blood, and at that time I came to visit you to see if you were okay. He couldn't believe it. The truth is he didn't expect someone to be so interested in his well-being that they even came to visit him. But after. I hope you're okay the person who attacked you left some ugly wounds on your wrists, it's a relief that you're not dead. He found out that she doesn't really know that he tried to commit suicide himself. I don't look at her after those words. A minute of silence passed, a minute in which she tried to know why she wasn't looking at her, until after thinking about it, she only came to a conclusion. A conclusion that I didn't want to believe. You did them yourself right. The silence was the only response I needed to confirm it. He didn't want to look at her, in fact he wanted her not to have saved him, so he wouldn't have to continue suffering anymore. Why wasn't the devil quicker to pick it up? Does he also enjoy seeing him suffer? Is he condemned to suffer no matter what he does? Is this your curse? Many questions and no answers are what he had in his mind. But he stopped thinking when he felt someone gently take his wrist. He was tolerant of pain since it was always in his life, but now. I didn't feel it. She had the doll in her hands touching the bandages with some honey. She looked. Instead of that look of rejection that he received from everyone the look of hatred for his peculiarity, he received a different look. He gave her a look of compassion and affection. She talked. I know that I am not the one to judge why you did it, since you had your reasons for doing it, but do not dance with the demons, when they should not touch you do not succumb to the devil, when you are stronger than him do not give in to words, when you only have to listen to yours. Despite what he told him he responded. You have not known my life I have a past that follows me like a shadow I have a future that is like a sentence tell me what could I do to stop all my suffering, you should not have saved me, you should have let me die like anyone would one less monster to worry about that's what everyone would say. She didn't answer him. He just wanted to cease to exist. But he opened his eyes. She felt a caress on her soft hair by a delicate hand. I'm not just anyone to let you die I don't think you're a monster. She continued her work even making it clear to him that what he tells her matters. If you think that your past and future will hurt you then forge your own present, so your past will be just an old memory, and your future will be a firm fact, and if you lack hands I will give you mine, and I will gladly help you temper it. How can you say that? You don't know me, you don't even know what I can be capable of, how can you tell me that you are going to help me in my pain? As much as he wanted to believe in his words out of fear he couldn't. He was so good at being real when his life was just a sad tragedy. Until she, still smiling, takes one of the sleeves of her blouse and shows her wrists. It was a scar. So she. I also felt your pain, and although I have become strong I can still fall into that darkness. Now everything made sense. But I can't allow you to do it too. What do you say? Would you let me be your support, and your hand would you let me be your friend? He closed his eyes in an attempt not to cry. Her tears came out silently, without uttering any moans or sobs. He looked up. And he did again what that boy did that time. He smiled even with tears. Midori Azuku thank you thank you for saving me. She smiled understandingly at him hugged him. He let out his cry. All your pain and anguish. All your evil. I didn't feel them anymore. Because right now. I already had an answer. And that answer was. Love. The days passed and Azuku had already left the hospital. His life has changed for the better since his first friend has been helping him. Whether it's getting him a job as a waiter in a three-star restaurant. And also helping you train your kasei in remote places. They both talk and listen to each other. They both have fun in many ways. They both do a lot together. Izuku got to know his friend more. She came from a rich family of rich parents who were only interested in their businesses. They just want her to be the perfect and obedient daughter who accepts what they tell her to do without complaining or anything. But the problem was that she didn't like it. There was a lot of pressure that they put on him every day, and even more so when they wanted to find him a suitor, and those who found him fled because of his intellect above the average of those daddy's sons. So among many horrible things, and so on they did the worst. They denigrated and verbally abused her for not wanting to obediently accept that she has to get married and amass her family's wealth. The insults were many, and every day they got worse to the point that they wanted to see her dead. 
She, with a broken soul, made what is now a scar that she wants to leave behind. Attempted suicide. But in the end after the servants took her to the hospital and her parents did not want to see her. She decided it wasn't worth trying to satisfy people who didn't care about her emotional and physical well-being. So he left what was his home and became independent. And everything has turned out well. Izuku was very amazed at how, despite having parents, she was not happy with them and how she had to go through those adversities to be what she is. Something you admire about her. Now they were walking the streets talking about mundane and banal things that were more interesting and less complicated. But when passing through a mega screen, news appears, the normal news about villains who commit crimes and the heroes who stop them. But this was a different one. One of them was interviewed before he was taken. They asked him why he destroyed the bank. Just said. Why I was missing money and stealing is the only thing I have known since I was born and I had to survive on the streets I am a thief because society made me that way. Those words were many times in the green-haired man's head. When they arrived at the apartment, Momo had noticed the trance state the boy was in. Aizu-kun, what do you have? Them nothing Momo said I was just thinking about something. You kept thinking about that villain's words right? He smiled when he heard his friend. Nothing escapes you I have thought about it a lot. She sat next to him to accompany him. I know you feel that his words affected you, but let me tell you that now that we are together, we will support each other so that no one can hurt us, alone we are weak, but together. We are stronger, as one. Family she finished for him with a smile. He thought about the girl's words until he came to a realization. What if we make it grow? Momo didn't understand what his friend was saying. What do you mean Izukun? She asked. What I mean is that he got up and walked to a window where he could see the city at night outside, in the streets, in every slum or every poor home, there are children with cassettes that society marginalizes. Children who live with fear and hatred for how they are treated, children who search for what we also want a family. The black-haired woman looked at how the boy, with each word, had emotion and passion in them, how with each word he looked not only at his future, but also at that of many like them, who, by chance of fate, were rejected by society. And I also saw how under the moonlight the boy looked at the city with a determination and will, equivalent to a great hero, a great human being. Aizu-kun. The aforementioned, upon hearing his name, looked at his partner. Momo-san. She got up from her bed without any warning and hugged the green-haired boy with love, being happy. I am so happy that now you have a goal and I know that in the face of every difficulty you achieve it. We will achieve. Momo looked at that plural word without understanding. It is not only my dream, but also yours, this dream is both of us, and we will raise it above all, no matter what others say, and how anarchist it sounds for the oppressed, we will be true heroes to give courage to our allies, and fear of our enemies, we will be the hope for those who seek it in their lives we can do it together. Now she didn't know what to say. She never expected that he would want to include her in his dream. But he didn't deny it. He also wanted to be there to see that dream come true. You're right we will do it together. It was already midnight. And Momo was trying to sleep in his bed. But I can't. So he crawled to the edge of his bed to see how his green-haired companion was sleeping on the floor with only a pillow and sheets for the cold of the night. I look at it for a long time. Before she asked them to sleep together, but every gentleman refused and decided to sleep on the floor so as not to disturb her. But she. He got off the bed to without hesitation stand next to him and have him dry off his body. She lay down next to him. And I hug him with love. As he looked at the boy's passive and innocent sleeping face. She thought. Before I didn't have a reason to move on before I just wanted to disappear, but now that I have you by my side, I don't want to leave you I'm afraid that you'll leave, and it will only be a memory in your memory I want to be with you until the end of my days. I want to be that person who will be there once you achieve your dream, I want to be your pillar in your life. He smiled and then gave a tender kiss to the teenager's forehead. And happily he closed his eyes, surrendering to sleep knowing that her fear is no longer weighing her down. Knowing that she is no longer alone. Time passed. They both trained their kase to become stronger. After class they met at a municipal beach in Mustafa where there were mountains and mountains of garbage and scrap metal, so using their kases and increasing their training regimens, they managed to clean it up. Every weekend they left the city so they could train better in the forests and not hurt anyone. He trained his kase called Earthquake. And she trained hers called Transmutation. A.N. This is a kase very similar to an alchemist having a philosopher's stone, giving her the ability to ignore the law of equivalent exchange, since I decided if Izuku had a powerful kase, she should also have a strong one to at least be within reach. Your pace. And within 10 months they were ready. Looking at the UA building where they would begin their dream and where they were determined to achieve it. Are you nervous Izukun? She asked, hiding her nerves. 
Well I would be lying to you if I told you no. And it was more than obvious that he was, since that day he had told director Nezu that he would accept entering Yuri, but he would do it like everyone else, and without a recommendation, so now he wants to show that he began to be a hero to fulfill his dream. So he smiled, and taking Momo's hand he just said. But we will achieve it I assure you. She blushed. And so with high spirits they walked to the entrance, but. Understand Deku. They both turned to see who spoke. Irokitsuki. But there was something that was different about him. Izukulo Nodo. I was no longer someone who let out anger everywhere. What is offered to you, Kitsuki? He responded kindly, hoping that there would not be any confrontation. Momo stayed on the sidelines, but at the same time was attentive to the fact that this boy wanted to attack his partner and friend. I just want I want to tell you that. It was difficult for him to speak since what he was going to do was against his principles. But I had to do it. Thank you for for saving my life that day. Izuku was shocked. He never thought that the same proud and bad-tempered ex-friend would thank him. He didn't know what to think. But. But don't think that now I will be nice to you, did you hear me from now on I will do what I have to do to surpass you, and between the two of us, we will decide who is number one. Berizuku learned at that time that Kitsuki not only wants to thank him, but also wants to leave the enmities behind and start what is a rivalry. Hence. Well, I hope you get stronger Kitsuki because I don't want to leave you so far behind he smiled arrogantly. While the blonde also returned the smile. You better not become weak, or I would be angry that you make things easy for me, until we meet again Deku is what he said, as he left to enter the exam. And the green-haired man looking at how he was now having a lot of determination for what is now has started rivalry. While Momo, who was watching everything, just rolled her eyes knowing that this is a male-style reconciliation. Men were his thoughts. But he was glad that at least things were resolved. They both looked at each other, and just smiled, and then laughed, and started walking. But. The laces of Izuku's tennis shoes were loose, and he accidentally stepped on one, and was about to fall on his front. Shit. Momo realized it late, and couldn't help him. He closed his eyes waiting for the blow, but. Nothing happened. He. It was the only thing he could say. I'm sorry if I used my kasei without your permission, but I saw that you were going to fall, and that would be bad. They both looked at a girl almost their age or a year younger with short brown hair and brown eyes, having an innocent blush on her cheeks that made her look very adorable. While the boy was now upside down thanks to the gravity override, the black-haired woman spoke. Don't worry, you probably had good intentions, right Izukun? Why yes, of course, but could you please put me down, I feel like the blood is rushing to my head, said this one, uncomfortable because of the position he was in. Of course she made a gesture with her hand. Wait, not yet. Oh. The green-haired man already fell with gravity headfirst. Let go Momo finished saying, already resigned, and watched how the boy grabbed his head in pure pain. Perhaps a few neurons died from that blow. Oh no, are you okay? The brunette asked, now worried and sorry for what she did. No don't worry it's nothing is what he said, still holding his head because of the pain. But they both couldn't help but laugh at that since let's face it, humans enjoy other people's pain. Welcome to my live show. The speaker was none other than the pro hero, and also the radio host of the most popular station in Japan. Present Mick. Everyone say wow. But the only thing he received was. Silence. Difficult public he moaned disappointed. While in some seats we see our partner who was holding back the urge to laugh, and an explosive blonde who had his arms crossed looking away. Hey Kitsuki. The aforementioned flip, but I wish I hadn't. Given that. Until we meet again Deku the green-haired boy imitated him, and Momo gave in to laughter at her friend's funny act. Do you want me to bury you, Pindejo? The threat of explosions makes him very embarrassed for looking bad and losing his genius. Calm down now, although you must admit that it's funny is what she said, leaving aside the blonde's threat and listening to the muffled laughter of her friend, who was looking at the entry brochure with the corresponding data for the physical test. Fuck you bastard. Of course he responded. The green-haired man only closed his eyes after that answer and was glad that a conversation that he had not had for years was now returning. Excuse me. But he came out of his thoughts when a teenager with glasses and a serious and stressed attitude spoke, drawing everyone's attention. In this pamphlet you point out four types of villains, but you are only showing us three. If this is a mistake then it is a great shame for a top-level institute like UA. What is the meaning of this? You could tell Leagues that he was nervous about the exam. And you three. Now I point to the trio. Stop the antics that we are all trying to concentrate on for this exam, if you only came to play then it is better that you leave. Obviously that Sundier didn't like those words at all. What did you say, fucking four eyes? I'm going to. But he was stopped by Deku himself who stopped his rage just by looking at him. 
and then look at the young man seriously. Do you know what tolerance is? I ask him. The glasses guy didn't know why he asked that question so he answered. Yes I know what tolerance is, why are you asking? Because if you knew, you would not have done what you just did, some heroes follow their own code, whether moral or in their attitude, and if you criticize someone they will not see it favorably, an example would be if you told them how annoying what our present mix screams. And he can see that with bad eyes, learn what tolerance is because it will save you from making a fool of yourself like now. His words were serious, and detonated maturity, as if you were listening to an adult giving a sermon to a young person, so that he would not make the same mistake again. That surprised many. My friend is right, if you become a pro-hero you will have to work with people who will have different opinions than yours. Maybe they will tolerate you, but what about you? Momo finished the sermon, leaving the boy with glasses silent and sitting down again with the duo's words in his mind. The rest happened normally with Bakugo smiling because they silenced the one he calls fucking four eyes. How much you review? They were all taken to different parts in simulated cities. Bakugo left very upset since he wanted to crush Izuku in that exam, and before getting on his bus he just said. You better pass or else I'll bury you, damn you bastard. Which gave him nervous laughter, as everyone looked at the duo who was embarrassed by such a situation. When they were preparing. Izukun let me give you something. Then from his hand some bright crimson flashes touched the ground, and after this a weapon similar to a spear, but with a curved blade was slowly created. It was a Bicento with a long red handle, and a silver colored blade with a sharp edge. Wow Momo-chan, it's a Bicento, how did you know how to use one? I saw you training on the beach with a cane, and you pretended that one end had a blade, in addition to the fact that the blade is made of galvanized steel with a tungsten alloy, which is melted with hard tools that are exposed to vibration such as cutters, drills, and eye break hammers, I made this weapon based on your kasei is what he said, smiling sincerely. Thank you Momo-san, I wouldn't know what to do without you, you're a great friend. She said it honestly since she wouldn't know what it's like to have a great friend like her. But Momo, despite the good words, was hurt when he classified her as a friend. Since I wanted to achieve something more or at least be the one who has rights over him and enjoy until I advance to the next level. So she determined. Tonight I will tell you without fear since what I have with you is real until death my Izukun, you are the angel that changed my life. They were her thoughts, being determined to advance her relationship with the green-haired man. Well the aforementioned. He just looked at her, and at the same time he scolded himself for thinking of her, as something more than a friendship he didn't deserve to love, since he doesn't want to get hurt, and the others. They both looked at each other in their thoughts that they did not realize that the doors to start the entrance exam would have been closed. Start now. This left all the participants confused. What are they waiting for? There are no countdowns in a real battle, stop standing still, and move. Like those two lovebirds who are already ahead of you, and present mix words were true, the pair ran at good speed entering the fall city. Since they took advantage of the moment of confusion to take the lead. And without remedy, and with time counted the rest entered the city cursing that pair for being opportunists. When they entered, they were intercepted by some robots that gave a score of one point. Izuku used his new weapon to pass through the robot without problems with a thrust and vibrating the blade. After a wave of the blade he cut the head of another, and with a quick movement he jumped and stood on top of one of them with his hand. That shone with a transparent white aura, touching the robot and causing internal vibrations, causing its circuits and joints to deform, resulting in it exploding. I have many is what he said. Momo, on the other hand, with agile movements, slipped from the openings of the robots and touched them, leaving them a gift. She touched five of them and, already being away from them, with only her thumb she pressed a detonator, making them explode. Back to the foundry. Izuku saw that a larger one arrived in the form of a scorpion, and using his weapon and his good strategy he cut the legs and stuck the blade in the center of the robot underneath, making it explode. Another garbage robot. Momo with his kasei created a professional bow, and when he shot arrows that had explosives on the back of the tip and with the detonator he made the arrows explode, they were stuck in the robots, leaving them as scrap metal. That's what you get for messing with me. Understand Momo-san. The black-haired man looked at Izuku who finished him off with the tip of his weapon. Nine in a row. He said, knowing that he was on a good streak. Poor guy. I'm 21. She said smiling with superiority, knowing that she beat him in score. He? I'm not going to let you beat me Momo-san. Let's do this, whoever loses will make dinner, do you think? Made. He said, knowing how delicious she cooks. And so they continued destroying robots competing to see who wins, while the others who were also eliminating robots could not be amazed at how that pair mercilessly and with morbid sarcasm eliminated one by one. But what surprised everyone was that one of good size was eliminated by both of them, and they said. Who's next? Yep they were the perfect couple. 
While in the dark room where many people watched the candidates try to get points, several talked about the ones that caught their attention. Among them Bakugou who scored many points by eliminating robots with a very wild look full of bloodlust. But what caught everyone's attention was the synergy and good teamwork of the aforementioned pair that present make calls lovebirds. That girl really knows how to move, not many have the agility to slide through openings, is what a woman said. The boy doesn't do anything wrong, he doesn't let anyone escape his attacks, that's what someone with a square head said. Both lovebirds coordinate very well together, and they are taking it as a competition I bet 20 that the boy wins, said present make creating a bet. I 30 to the girl. I bet 25 on the boy. I 15 to her. While they were betting, both those who met Izuku looked at the screen smiling and knew that the boy they took out of prison was very different from the one they see now. That boy is overcoming his fear of his kasei. I can see Itashinori kun, but he still has a long way to go before we can say that his recovery is complete, and you can offer him that is what the rodent said, still looking at the screen. I know, who knew I found the perfect candidate for what I want to do. But it is not yet decided, let's see how it acts in a situation like the one we will put it in now the rodent said seriously, pressing a button. Without knowing that they would get a surprise. Minus 30. Boom. 31. Boom. 32. Boom. 33. Boom. 34. Boom. Minus 25. Slash. 26. Slash. 27. Slash. 28. Slash. 29. Slash. Both. Momo with explosive arrows and Izuku with vibrating cuts turned every robot that crossed them into scrap metal. I'm beating you Izukun. She boasted. Damn, there has to be more the boy was desperate as he could no longer find many and even more so when he saw that his friend was finishing them off from a distance thanks to her bow and explosive arrow. I had to look more. But. Both of them along with the rest of those who took the test felt a tremor. And in one of the intercessions a huge robot came out that could easily demolish buildings. It was pointer zero. And he addressed them. Shit, Izukun we have to run away. Momo said, leaving aside the competition and taking the hand of his friend and platonic love to flee from the enormous titan. I didn't object and he let himself be carried away. But. Ow. They both turned to the direction where they heard that sound. And what they saw I loved them. It was the same brown haired girl they met at the entrance. She was trapped in rubble caused by pointer zero. And the worst. The enormous colossus marked her as a target. Izukun we have to. He stopped talking. I stop when I see the green-haired man's gaze. It was a look that she was related to. A look of despair. Izuku. Meanwhile he. When he looked at that girl he saw something from his past that he wanted to forget. The image changed to see that instead of the girl there was a woman with the same familiar features that woman was the author of her innocent days. That woman. It was his mother. The last memory he had of her was that before he died he only gave her a smile and a farewell. As she watched the blood spread across the rubble of that earthquake that killed her. It was then that. Izuku. He ran straight towards the pointer zero. Without thinking. Without knowing how. For no logical reason. He just went straight to him. Just when the pointer with one of its enormous pincers was going to crush the chestnut. Just when she saw her entire young life flash before her eyes. Tring. The very heavy metallic sound was heard. And the girl felt like a wave originated behind her. He turned slowly to see how someone stopped the huge robot with just brute force and a long gun. She recognized him. It was the same one who prevented him from taking a bad step of bad luck on his important day. It was the same one standing on some rubble and stopping the enormous titan with not so notable effort and only the hilt of the Bicento. That surprised not only her, but everyone watching, including those who were watching. Hey, don't bother her. And with that scream he pushed the robot. Making him lose his balance. Leaving you more surprised than you already are. It took a lot of power and brute strength similar to that of a giant to be able to do that. But I don't end there. The green-haired man jumped directly to the height of what is the center of the same machine. And pulling his arm back, it became thicker thanks to the muscles becoming large due to so much power that it tore the sleeve of his sweatshirt. And the worst. The very powerful wide aura with raging wind surrounding the fist. That was something. Hey Larmo Momo. Everyone hold on to something. She shouted, creating a pole with her cassette and clinging to it. Some, including the guy with glasses, paid attention to the black-haired woman's words. And right at that moment. Hum. The winds themselves broke, forming long, huge cracks in the air, and then a huge shock wave that. Cross. It destroyed the same robot, leaving it as if the same force of the impact had completely destroyed it. And the worst. 
The shock wave passed through the machine, and then passed through the entire fake city, eliminating the remaining robots that were behind the Titan, and sending them flying like scrap metal. The others looked and clung to something, as the wave also tried to carry them away, and not to mention how the ground shook considerably. Even the tremor reached that room where those people looked at everything with total shock. They couldn't believe how easily he could do that it's out of logic even for those who have cassettes. When the tremors stopped and the wave calmed down. Everyone present could see how the dust cleared. As the green-haired man himself was on a pile of rubble looking over the mountain of metal that was previously the Zero Pointer. They had different thoughts. Many saw on him a monster or demon. Others saw him as a very powerful hero. But those who were truly aware and believed in destiny saw in it an image. An imposing image of a warrior. One that just by looking at his back they would feel safe. One who no matter what enemy or army he faces, would fight to the death to protect those he values most in life. In him they saw. To the most feared and loved hero of all. He has passed the test and he has stopped fearing his casse, said the rodent. I know, but he still has a long way to go before I can be the one I want to convey my will to said All Might himself in his original form, being proud of the green-haired man's acts of heroism. But you did notice it, right? Asked the director in a serious tone. Yes, he is one of them a blessed one said the number one hero, also seriously. I have a feeling that this generation of heroes will be one that revolutionizes what we know about heroism, whether for better or worse were the enigmatic words of the rodent, sensing a great change in the tide of time and peace. While. Some of those present were discussing the bet, wanting to know. Who won? Aizu Kun. Was she screaming when she saw him standing on the rubble? But when he went to see him. He saw that he was breathing heavily, knowing, and leaning on the spear. She just smiled and said. When will you stop worrying about me Baka she asked, being relieved and a little upset with her friend. I don't know, you tell me he responded tiredly, but still smiling mischievously. And then he collapsed, and she placed her head on his legs and played with his green curls, while the same boy rested even more, so he stayed awake. Time is over. Although the announcement was made, both of them didn't care, they were in their world. But the other spectators who watched everything murmured about the incredible display of power and how he didn't care about losing his precious time to get points to save a girl. They saw that. What incredible power. But that Kasei could be the most powerful of all the heroes. Without forgetting that I'd delete the pointer zero without any problem. Among them, the boy with glasses couldn't stop looking at that pair analyzing and at the same time scolding himself for his actions. They believe that he did it just to get attention, but what really happened was that he jumped into danger just to protect that girl from imminent death, if I had not concentrated completely on the test, I would have also saved her, which makes me see that I still don't have what it takes to be a hero, I think I owe those two a big apology, if I get to see them. By the way I think I won the bet, the green haired man mentioned, smiling mockingly at his partner. What are you talking about? She asked, disconcerted by her friend's words. He just raised his hand and pointed with his thumb at the enormous mountain of scrap that was previously the colossal pointer zero. When she saw him and then looked at her partner, she remained silent and then later. That only counts as one. Reproach him for that unfair. Say what you want, but admit it wins. He said smiling victoriously and raising his fist as if he had won a great competition. What they did not know is that the male population present and observing had only one thought. Champion. And the female population, including the brunette, only looked stoically at the man, thinking. Idiots. That day was marked in male history that the green-haired man achieved a victory in the name of all the men in the world. As your champion. Ten days passed. And the results came. Of course, in those ten days there was something like a silent treatment on the part of the black-haired girl, as punishment to torment her friend for that trap he made. Besides sleeping on the couch. Let's admit it, even if we are very cool, they always have the last word, and the only thing we have left is to hold on. The same thing happened to our prota. But back to where we were. They both only found a hologram disc in the envelope. They both saw all night at the screening. Both saw their scores in which they placed first and third on the list of the most notable. Which makes them happy. But. I also want to tell you that here with my colleagues we saw all his movements, and if anyone is interested, let me tell you that between the two of us, the one who won the bet was Midoriya by beating the greatest to ha ha ha. Hey All Might, don't tell eyes, it's obvious that pointer zero only counted as one. Midnight, don't fool yourself, and accept that I won, and you lost the bet. Erased. One more word, and you will sleep without your sleeping bag. I said nothing. The young people laughed uncomfortably when they heard an argument behind the symbol of peace that was funny to them. Well, all I have left to do is tell you welcome to UE, this is your Boku no Hero Academia. And with the projection finished. We did it. We passed. Aizu-kun we pass. 
They both celebrated with a hug and many jumps of joy. But they didn't notice. How close their faces were. Until after a few minutes they noticed it. It must be said that it was a very uncomfortable moment. Just when Midoriya wanted to separate. But. She wouldn't let go. Am Momo-san could you let me go please said this very nervous man. Not because I want to tell you something, it's very important, she said, very serious and determined. For Yeo Rozu it was the perfect opportunity to tell him how she feels about the green-haired boy. And can't we do it tomorrow? She asked, trying to get out of that mess that he doesn't know how he got into. No. It has to be now. Without being able to react quickly, he was captured by handcuffs and a rope around his torso. Hey wait. Play the song earned it by the artist The Weekend. Now we see our protagonist in his friend's bed while she was wearing her somewhat risque pajamas and sat on the boy's pelvis. It should be said that something crazy could happen now. Momo-san, please wait, I he begged for release, but the fear of what could happen. This is necessary Izukun, I have to tell you, she said, blushing and using her willpower to not give in to her nerves. But you don't have to love me and handcuff me, please free me, he begged again. I feel safer if I do it like this, please just listen to me I stop talking when I see him. The look of both of them gave each other. They say that the eyes are the window to the soul, and in the souls of both of them there were many feelings, several with which they could identify. But what they both didn't know is that the closer their souls were, the more they wanted to never be separated. That feeling. That wish. That need for both. They. They wanted to satisfy that need. The need to love. Something they have never had or was taken away from them by life or destiny itself. Momo-san the one hypnotized by his friend's beautiful eyes. Eyes Ukunayushi spoke looking into the sweet eyes of her secret love. Bringing her lips closer, the black-haired woman could feel her breath, and that excited her. It turned her on to have him docile, submissive, defenseless, a hurt being that she wants to protect and not let any woman touch him. Let no one touch the boy she loves and is hers by her own right. As for Izuku. He couldn't help but find that moment very exciting. Being submissive by nature before a woman, he did not care. In fact he was willing to be her protector her guardian her defender. Protect her from every man who wants to steal what belongs to her and love her with everything he can give and offer. Both. But the touch of the lips. She. Aizukun with silent tears and a really beautiful smile. I love you she finished kissing him tenderly. Momo-san he also had tears and smiled. Happiness knowing your feelings is not only yours, but also both of you. I love you too. That same night. Two young people were not only united in body, but in pure soul, knowing now. That they are no longer alone never again. In a quiet place. But the wind blowing the cherry petals. The young couple was walking. Going to a specific place. Aizukun, are you sure about this? We can come another day if you prefer Momo spoke, worried about the silence of her now boyfriend. I want to do it today Momo-san also I want you to meet her, he said, smiling melancholy while holding a bouquet of white lilies. They walked for half an hour in which she did not let go of his hand, and he continued looking at the ground leading the way towards their destination. When they arrived, Momo could see that it was a place where those who are no longer rest. Yusatafu Cemetery. And upon entering there were tombs. Many were you passed, some careful. Others forgotten. And others recently posted with recent dates. And the little ones couldn't be missing where she deduced that they were children who didn't live more than 10 years. The months. Everything was sad and melancholic. We arrived. She snapped out of her trance when she saw that they were both standing in front of a grave. One with a name. Inko. Izuku's mother. Many thoughts passed through his mind. But I stopped when I saw how the green-haired boy removed some dry leaves on the tombstone with his hands. Hello mom it's been a while since I came to see you I've had a lot of problems and a lot of things have happened to me. The boy speaks to the grave with a docile and hurt voice, remembering the days when when he arrived home, she would receive him with a smile. Where she slept with him in the storms. Where your kase didn't matter. She still loved him. When Momo saw him he knew then that his mother was one of the most important people in his life, and having lost her, must have been a hard blow to his heart. Having a kase that symbolizes what he took from his mother must be a burden he never wanted a curse that follows him. I know that one day you told me not to fear my kase, and now I no longer fear him, since there were those who helped me overcome this fear of using him all might, Director Nezu, and someone I want to introduce to you when I you made me promise to bring a girl home. The black-haired woman had a blush on her cheeks at those words from her now boyfriend. With the movement of his hand, the green-haired man indicated for her to come closer. When they were both side by side. This is Momo, the girl who saved my life and with whom I want to share it. The alchemist's heart beat a lot upon hearing such a statement. Nice to meet you Midoriya-san I am Izukun's girlfriend she appeared at the grave. 
She makes sure I don't do another stupid thing like the one I did I don't know if I would have met you or not, the truth is I think you wouldn't have been happy at all, and you would have yelled at me until eternity. She looked at him, seeing him smile, even though he knew that talking to a grave would make no sense. But I don't question it, since she would have done the same if a relative or someone she loved was no longer in the world of the living. And the hours passed. Where she said the very embarrassing things she discovered about him during the time they lived together. Where he told all the training he did. And where they both told him that now. We managed to enter Yui, the most prestigious hero school in Japan. But the Sakura winds blowing. Mom, you don't know how much you missed me every night when I felt alone, although I learned to fend for myself, I don't forget your smile, and your optimism every time I was afraid for my kasei, I know what you told me once, that I don't hate this power that I have, but I can't help it, I just hope that wherever you are, you watch over me, and see that I can achieve my dream. And when we meet again I can tell you in person what Momo-san and I have achieved. All those words. All those feelings. All. He said it with silent tears in which they wet the green ground. Already leaving the flowers, I touch the grave and then smile sadly and look at the letters of the name. I promise to visit you more often and tell you the things I will do I hope you will watch over me on my way. And reluctantly. I leave the tombstone to walk away. With many memories and thoughts in my head. Are we leaving? I ask. Go ahead I'll catch up with you, she responded, wanting to do something. He nodded and walked towards the exit. On the other hand, Momo. She looked at the tombstone for a few moments and then used her kasei to transmute more designs and the statue of an angel on top of it. He smiled when he saw his work. I know it's not much, but I hope you like it. She said and then lowered her head as a sign of respect towards the deceased woman. And don't worry I will be in charge of protecting Aizu-kun since I love him and I couldn't imagine a life without him I would have liked to have his blessing and give him the news that he will be a grandmother when the time comes, I will save him times that are necessary for you to begin to value your life, I give you my word. And with an oath and a grateful smile she turned around and prepared to reach her beloved. But. Gracious. A whisper stopped her. And I turned to see something unusual. A swirl of wind mixed with pink petals revolved around the tombstone. She could swear that within that whirlpool she could see a shadow. Huidolo. And with that whisper the entity disappeared with the passage of the wind. Momo, although she was a little scared, was not afraid. And smiling, she ran to reach her beloved and then hugged him from behind and kissed him on the cheek. Why did you take so long? He asked, smiling at his girlfriend's pampering. I can only tell you that I already have permission to put you in your place in case you want to do something stupid. The green-haired man let out a sigh, knowing how protective and strict his girlfriend can be. But he doesn't care. He loves her and accepts her as she is. It was night. On a beautiful beach. The young couple looked at the beautiful moon. Who would have thought that the former place full of mountains of garbage and scrap would now be the place most frequented by couples for declarations and propositions. Without forgetting the meetings not suitable for those under 18. Both sitting on a bench with their hands together. Aizu Kun tomorrow begins our life, as students in Yi many things can happen to us, and the truth is. You're scared right? A settlement and a turning of the eyes due to great concern were the response that the green-haired man had. He just put his hand around her waist and didn't separate from her, and the girl just rested her head on her boyfriend's. Hey Anne. She's taller than him, and that's canon I like Deku's appearance. They both stayed like that for a few minutes looking at the moon and listening to the sound of the waves. Momo-sen I know why you are afraid, and I understand that we have gone through things that are making these good moments unbelievable. I know I'm afraid of losing you, and going back to the darkness her tears flowed from her eyes, and she hugged her boyfriend more I'm afraid that we're no longer together, and I don't want I don't want to have darkness in my life again. I don't want you to leave me Aizu-kun. She cried. Izuku consoled her when she was also sad. They knew that the profession of hero was one in which it implied that every time they left they ran the risk of not returning alive. The Izuku of before one who wanted to die wouldn't have cared since no one would cry on his grave. But the Izuku of now one who prefers to die rather than lose what he loves most also does not want to lose Momo and return to what she refers to as darkness. Loneliness. He looked at her face and with his thumbs delicately wiped away the tears that ran down her beautiful cheeks. Their eyes met. And with a tender kiss. He spoke to her. My mother once told me when I felt people's hatred for my kasei, she told me that what happens to me is a darkness, and sometimes the darkness can show you what the light is. Momo understood those words she just smiled and then kissed him. Your mother was right I passed my darkness to have what I wanted so much my light. We will both achieve and overcome this together. Yes together. And in that atmosphere, not only romantic but also one full of strong emotions, they both kissed with the moon as a witness. 
while in the distance a thin man with blonde hair watched everything in silence smiling. And then walked away knowing that now both boys were overcoming adversity together. Do you carry your notebooks? Sip. Your scarf. Sip. Don't you forget anything. Momo-san, you sound like my mother he said smiling. I'm sorry, but there are times when I have to remind you, she said in a tender pout. And with their uniforms on they left. Passing through many streets until they reached the station where they would take the train to Yuri Academy. When they arrived they saw the huge entrance. Looking at each other with determination and holding hands they entered. There was no turning back. They walked through several hallways, of course they had problems finding their classroom. But they found her. Remind me to memorize the path Momo sent said, a little embarrassed. It took us a little while because we got lost, I hope, and they haven't started yet, she said, making fun of her boyfriend a little. What does it matter I hope they are not both there. Are you talking about your army rival and the guy with glasses? I asked amused. If they wouldn't want to run into them on my first day is what he said, opening the huge doors, hoping that that wouldn't happen. Unfortunately. At your feet off the table. It is a complete lack of respect for the students who came before us. What the hell do you care about? It was not so. The scene was breaking out between the two of them, the ones he didn't want to see. The green-haired man just sighed heavily, knowing that he has to deal with both of them. Just when Momo was going to say something. Please keep it. She just laughed like a lady. What school are you from? Balaimiida Tenya, a recent graduate of Samay School, said the teenager, formally introducing himself. An elite, huh? Well, I'm going to really enjoy destroying you, you bastard. Of course he couldn't miss that thirst to confront someone strong that characterizes him. Why do you want to destroy me? Do you really want to be a hero? He asked, somewhat fearful of such audacity. I also ask myself the same thing, and the truth is I still haven't found an answer, it would be like the mystery of Bloop Izuku commented, drawing everyone's attention. Izukun the Bloop was said by scientists to be a sound caused by the ice falls in Antarctica. It is not possible for you to believe that there is a creature that is five times larger than the blue whale. Momo-san, if Kaseis exist, don't you think there could be a being that surpasses the largest animal in the world? Plus, he might be like a sea monster with the power to create hurricanes and colossal storms, and... You watch a lot of Anaim Izukun that's what Momo said with a goten in the hundred. Some of those present looked at the pair with curiosity, since they did not know this myth. Well, if you allow me to give my opinion, I think that the lady here is right about an ice break, it is the most logical explanation. They both turned to Iida who gave his opinion on a certain topic. But. Please we live in a world where logic is logic, plus I know about sounds, and I can swear that an ice break could not have caused that. This is what a girl with short black hair and the female Yui uniform and jack phones on her earlobes argue is her most noticeable feature. And not only her, but several others joined a possible debate about the mysterious bloop. So much so that. Shut the hell up. The Muslim got irritated because in his opinion the bloop is a waste of time. Hey it's you. The couple turned to see that it was the same girl they met at the exams. Ah hello. How are you? Aren't you hurt? Momo asked about his condition. I'm fine, and thank you for saving me, she said, smiling green-haired. It was nothing, I just couldn't. Of course it was something, you scrapped the zero points with just one hit. She said excitedly, and threw a fist forward. In fact, the fact that it can also break the wind, as if it were glass is a very notable effect said the boy with glasses, drawing everyone's attention to such a piece of information that he blurted out. His kasei is strong, and I would ask that you not ask any more questions, please Momo asked, trying to ward off the uncomfortable questions. My name is Yuraka Achako, I hope we can be friends. Bidori Izuku I hope so too. Momo Yeoirozu, I might be friends. It seemed good. If you come to make friends, you better leave. Behind the chestnut tree a voice was heard. Everyone turned to see something similar to a yellow caterpillar, and it's not a weedle. And he had the face of a somewhat lanky man with long hair, and a bored look that someone has when they work in a self-service store. Despite the confusion, everyone settled into their seats, and the couple looked for a place where they were closest. The man came out of the caterpillar which was a sleeping bag, looking at everyone with a look more boring than watching the Congress channel. It took 8 seconds to calm down that's very bad, I'm Azawa Shota, your teacher in charge, so I hope we get along well the truth is, his words did not show any enthusiasm, leaving all the curious young people wondering if all the teachers in Yi are that weird. I want everyone to put on these physics uniforms and see us at the training fields in 10 minutes is what he said, taking the uniforms out of his sleeping bag. I don't even know how he did it. And may a bad lightning strike anyone who says Pokemon magic. Already in the training fields. They were all wearing the institution sports clothing. 
Of course there were some events involving a certain dwarf with purple balls on his head, who wanted to make a hole in the wall to spy on the girls while they were getting dressed. But a certain green-haired guy didn't like that very much. And now he had a bump on his head bigger than the purple balls. Thank the gods or deities that Izuku didn't kill him. The say test. That's what everyone asked in that situation. But there won't be an orientation ceremony? Yuraka asked without knowing. In my class we don't have time for that kind of thing, if each of you aim to become heroes, so I want to speed things up now Bakugou walks towards the circle. With his hands in his pockets, he obeyed, looking at the others, wanting to know how strong they were. Since you came in third place in the entrance exams, I want to test you how well you throw the ball without your kasei. Line is 65 meters he responded. I want you to do it using your kasei, you can do whatever you like, as long as you don't leave the circle, he said boringly. At those words he smiled sinisterly looking at Izuku who only had his arms crossed and one eyebrow raised. He prepared himself and with explosions in his hand. He launched. Though dead. And at high speed he threw the ball propelled by a chain of explosions while Izawa looked at his indicator at the mark he made. Knowing the limit of your kaseis is necessary to improve yourself and ascend is what he said, showing the mark to everyone. Your mark 705.2 meters. Incredible. Aridid said very impressed. And that's using her kasei, said a pink-skinned girl, also impressed and excited thinking about how fun it would be. But. That's all. Everyone turned to whoever said those words. Is that all those nitroglycerin sweaty arms can do? Much ado about nothing. Izuku was the one who spoke with a look that said is there no more. Directed at the bomb boy. Momo just rolled her eyes knowing how full of testosterone they both were wanting to kill each other. Instead Bakugou looked with deep hatred, not liking that provocation. So without asking permission he took another ball and, repeating the same act, he threw it only the score was now higher. 843.1 meters. Now the green-haired boy had a look at that something. These are my nuts, asshole. He said, driven by anger, making explosions with his palms. You must have lost them when I almost made you scared that day at our previous school. Yes, of course that day I almost made you eat dirt like my dog. Of course, but don't forget that I was the one who made you eat dirt and don't let me be someone's bitch, he said, as he approached. Well, you should have left, that would have shown your place, as the Deku that you are Bakugou also did the same. Well, this Deku broke your mother and saved your fucking ass from almost being raped that day by the sower liquid pedophile he said, as he stood in front of him, holding his gaze ready for anything. I didn't ask for your fucking help that day. So don't expect a thank you from me. A thank you is the last thing I would expect from a guy with an ego, as fucking high, as the Eiffel Tower do you really think you can stand in front of me and beat me in a bare knuckle fight? Let me tell you this, you and me, hand in hand, with no one around I will break you in two like a dry twig. The atmosphere was tense, nor did the others have the guts to try to stop what would be a brutal fight, but. Maybe we'll find out one day, said the green haired man, clenching his right fist. So pray that that fucking day never comes the blonde finished with explosions in his palms. Very well enough if you want to kill each other so much like mad dogs, do it in the tests, the one with the highest score will be the strongest in the class, and the worst score will be expelled. Everyone protested about that, but he just smiled, arguing that no one plays fair in the world. Welcome to UE. And with those words the tests began. Test 150 meter race. You cheated on me, you bastard, it's not possible that you beat me. The blonde reproached. Says the one who tried to blind your eyes with his explosions. The green haired man returned. Aren't you going to do something? The girls asked Momo who just sighed. Will it help? You know that man, the more you repress them, the more uncontrollable they become. I let Izukan unload whatever he has to get out, she said, taking a bottle of water. That's what he said while the men looked like they wanted to see a cockfight. Test 2 strength test. Did you have to break Midoriya? Is what Izawa asked expressionlessly, having a destroyed strength meter in his hand and everyone looking at him in shock. I'm sorry ouch. Momo-san, could you please let go of my ear, it hurts me. Said the submissive with tears in his eyes, and having his ear pulled by his girlfriend who was scolding him for what he did. You deserve this for your childhood challenges she pulled harder, being angry with the green-haired boy, since she had to repair him with her kasei. Aha, you made me stupid asshole ha 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 it was Bakugou laughing at his rival's suffering, even though he lost that test. I'll take revenge on you when it's your turn, and there we'll see who's a fool here is what he thought, if he speaks it will be worse, since he wants that moment to come. Best three long jump on foot. That can't be a fucking tie. The blonde reproached Azawa who didn't even flinch. We demand a reunion, this cannot remain a tie. The green-haired man also reproached. They behave worse than children, the girl with the jackphone said, looking at everything. 
You're not the only one, but that's how men are the girl with pink skin, and horns also said, looking at everything. Try four repeated side steps. Now I beat you, asshole. Now the blonde was gloating about his marker. Laugh will you can, Muslim, he said now without fighting thanks to Momo. While the one with the purple balls looked lustfully at the girl, something that the green-haired boy noticed. Excuse me, can I know how much you look at my girlfriend? I'm nothing old, it's just your things. He said nervously. Izuku only had his gaze on that dwarf wanting to give him an earthquake in the head. Best 5 ball throw. Infinite was the word of everyone who was impressed by the chestnut score. It was great, your Raka-san said Momo along with the girl with the jack phones. It was nothing, she said, being a little embarrassed. Which was nothing. It was time for someone to remove that pair of idiots from her pedestal she mentioned, pointing with her thumb at the pair of rivals who had their mouths open for such a score that they will never in her life surpass. Seriously, Kaioka-san was nothing. I hope you're not mad at me I ask, worried about how they would both take it. As for them well. For second place. Izuku asked, not just giving him another. Those. The blonde responded, being the same. Midoriya, your turn as Awa called. The step already having a ball in his hand ready to throw it. In almost all the tests he did not have to use his kasei, since his superhuman strength has helped him a lot, but now, although he can surpass that score, he does not want to use it due to collateral damage. So, raising one leg very high, as if he were a professional baseball pitcher, he gained the strength to throw it. But. The bandage held his arm preventing him from doing so. What? As I thought you're not using your kasei, do you think you're not using it? What is useless to you at times like this? He turned to see that it was Azawa himself who stopped him, and not only that he noticed something hidden in his white scarf. Eraserhead were Izuku's words when he recognized who his teacher was now. All your colleagues have used their kaseis to be able to be here giving the best they have. Are you going to insult them? You don't know the magnitude of my kasei, it's better that you don't. If you are not going to be serious, I recommend that you leave since a hero who is afraid to use his kasei is not someone who deserves to be here, am I right? The look Izuku gave his teacher was one that asked him to take back his words. I see that now there is something of value in you I will give you another chance, and I hope you don't waste it he said now, releasing Izuku's hand, allowing him to do it again. Azawa sensei doesn't know what could happen. Aoi Rozu sen I recommend that you do not speak or I will subtract the points you have now this threatened. At least leave me a few words with him. The black haired man only made a gesture of permission to leave her, and she walked straight to the green haired man. Try not to use too much power remember that you almost damaged many structures in the entrance test. I know. And with those words plus a kiss on the cheek she walked away so her boyfriend could do what he proposed. What kind of kasei do you have? The same red-haired boy asked. In the tests we saw that he had a lot of strength, so that must be his kasei he mentioned a blonde with a thick tail. It must be great then, said a black-haired boy with ribbons coming out of his elbows. I would rather say powerful, Ida said very seriously. What are you talking about? Asked a boy with a face similar to a bird. His kasei almost destroyed the test city by launching a single blow. Not only that, the wind broke, as if it were glass Uraka said very animatedly, already wanting to see that power. As soon as the others heard the words break the wind they didn't believe it. Akigu only had his hands in his pockets, seriously looking at what his rival was going to do. While the girl with two color hair looked at the green haired boy analytically, wanting to know how strong he was. Yukin Izukun Momo encourages knowing how difficult it is for her boyfriend. Izuku just looked at the ball. Thinking. Well there is no turning back if I want to achieve my dream I must do what I have to do if I have to become a hero or a monster to achieve it, I will do it, I closed my eyes mom please protect me. And with those thoughts he opened his eyes and with a determined look. He prepared. With his hand surrounded by a wide aura and with wind swirling around the hand that had the ball, the... The others felt a little uneasy, especially a bird boy and a frog girl who were upset. And. But the war cry. He launched. He ai. Crash. Everyone looked shocked at what they saw. From the break the ball came out, and with a speed almost at the speed of sound for whoever saw it, creating an air wave that knocked many to the ground, and also the earth cracked followed by a tremor causing everyone in the school to panic. Put under their seats, when the shaking stopped the meter rang giving a score that was almost impossible. 5.90 kilometers. WTF. Impossible. It's crazy. Izuku got down on his knees and grabbed his wrist, wincing in pain. Izuku. Momo ran towards him to see his condition are you okay? He said checking his wrist. I am it's hard to contain my kasei when I use it. You did well, the structures resisted the tremor, but your arm is what worries me, it doesn't stop shaking. 
and it was true every time he tried to contain and use just a little bit of his kasay, as if it had a will of its own, it didn't obey and wanted to break free. The tests were very lenient with you. They both turned to see that it was Azawa who looked at the boy seriously. And my suspicions were true or blessed. Izuku frowned at that word, glaring daggers at his teacher. The others were lost until Ida spoke. I have heard about them, it is said that there is a small number of Kasei's possessors who can be compared to the power of a god, due to their great destructive power. And their few setbacks they can be synonymous with sons of gods or demigods, the only way to stop them would be to fight until they are tired or in the worst case scenario kill them, so the governments would hunt one down if they had the chance, only the heroes that are in the top 10 are capable of facing them. The shock was present, and to make matters worse, Bakugou clenched his fists at those who heard. He knew that the arrest and trial were only a facade for those in the government to have their hands on his rival, he knew that there can be corruption, no government is free from it. Azawa, what happened? Several heroes arrived at the place, and from the windows the students looked, everyone knew what caused that power that Izuku was in an intact and undamaged place. We only had tests, and All Might should not have brought him here, that boy is a risk for all students and teachers. Nonsense Eraserhead, he has as much potential as a diamond in the rough, denying him his opportunity would be like creating a villain, said the number one hero in his muscular form. You know well that the blessed are uncontrollable, most of them become very dangerous people. Azawa, he is very different from many of them we cannot judge him like that. Everyone turned to see Principal Nezu who walked calmly. The rector is for everyone's safety. That's why I assigned him to his class. You would be able to override it in case young Midoriya loses control. While they were talking, the others from other classes looked out of their windows, being interested in Izuku. His colleague spoke to him asking him questions about how his kasei works. But what no one knew was that both boys with bird and frog similarities were staying away from him, as if they were afraid. And the girl with bicolor hair couldn't stop looking at him seriously. That day everyone at UA knew that Izuku Midoriya began his path to be the most feared hero of all. Not knowing. But challenges and more were already on the way. The end. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.